Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're gonna talk about photovoltaic thermal panels or PVT panels. So let's dive right into it. Now, what exactly is the problem that we want to build photovoltaic thermal panels? Well, reality is normal single junction solar cells that we utilize, there are multi-junction also and they are far more efficient, but they are idiotically expensive. So generally, most of the time, whenever you are looking around, you are always finding single uh, junction cells. They are only 20% efficient. Some scenarios, they are pushing as high as 25%. However, if you looked at the panel, backside of the panel, nameplate specifically, you would notice a temperature me uh, mentioned there. That is 25 degrees Celsius. And that's a problem for anything that is like, you know, used anywhere that is exposed directly to the sun. So solar cells heats up over the daytime, meaning if you have a giant solar farm and sun is just, you know, putting some love into it, over time it will heat up. And that heat up can go ludicrous level, meaning in cases of India or in cases of like Australia, you are talking about cell temperature to be as high as 100 degrees Celsius. Meaning the panel will be like, you know, 50 degrees Celsius, but the cell itself could be as high as 100 degrees Celsius or even higher than that. So that should uh, like, you know, give a cause for alert. It's like, whoa, that's hot. You know, this is hot. Now there is twofold uh, side effect of that. If your panels get that hot, meaning if your cells get hot, they lose their efficiency, meaning their voltage output drops dramatically. You know, basically zero degrees is the optimum scenario, but again, uh, basically whoever designed the laws around uh, you know measuring solar panels they knew for a fact that people will just measure it at like you know superconducting temperature and it's like yeah it's super efficient but real life is like hey zero degree 25 degree 50 degree and 75 degrees Celsius most of the time your panels are above 50 and below 75 so you get the point like there is a significant amount of energy that you are wasting just because your panels are heating up now that's just power loss side of things and you may be like hey uh, that's power loss how about I add like you know 10 percent more uh, solar panels Okay, that's one way of solving it. However, it also comes with one other consequence that it also reduces lifespan of the cell. Meaning if the cells are getting every day during peak, uh, you know, hours and it's going yolo hot as in like, you know, 100 degrees Celsius, the lifespan drops dramatically. Meaning whenever you are talking about like a company is giving a warranty of like 20 years, uh, you know, at 88% of the capacity. Why is that? Well, because you're cooking the cell, uh, the sun is basically. So if you have a solar farm and if all the panels are getting hot, they are also getting, uh, you know, shorter lifespan. Meaning if you can have a magical scenario or some sort of uh, active system where you can make sure all the panels are at 25 degrees Celsius throughout the day, the panels will last 50 years. Like literally, there will be almost a negligible performance drop. And not to mention everything else also in the panel will work well. For example, the glass, for example, the epoxy, uh, joints, connectors, all that will also last longer. Again, they do not like thermal cycling, ludicrous levels. So that's also desirable. That's the problem right now. Cells do not like to be hot and sun makes them hot. So what's the solution? Solution is very simple. You uh, introduce a working fluid that takes away heat. The fluid could be anything. It could be a gas, it could be air, it could be water. So that's up to you. Now that will, uh, the primary job of a fluid would be to stop panel from overheating, meaning you will try to reduce the panel temperature from ludicrous degree to almost uh, ambient temperature level. That's the whole point. And if you start to do that, even on a basic level, if you have nothing else, you're just running an open loop liquid system, you are talking about more electrical power 10% by, like by 10% and every panel will become 10% more efficient. So that is significantly serious benefit. Now, what about the heat that you are getting? Like how much heat is there? Is it like, you know, useless amount of heat or is it something significant? Well, uh, just take whatever kilowatt rating you have, basically, however kilowatts panel rating you have, just multiply that by two, bare minimum, that's the kilowatt rating you can get for example if your rooftop solar farm is 10 kilowatt uh, you're gonna get 20 kilowatt of heat bare minimum let that sink in you already have 10 kilowatt farm you're gonna get 20 kilowatt energy heat energy and would you be like wouldn't that reduce efficiency of the uh, panels no actually it will improve it because you have to know that sun is giving both load of energy we are barely consuming 20 percent of it that 80 percent if you can consume that also then you are getting that heat it's not free energy it's just like hey there is waste heat how about we collect that waste heat and it also improves the yield of the panels basically how much energy the panel each panel is producing and also improves the lifespan of the panel meaning especially for residential section for commercial section because of the pricing models and all that jazz they have the advantage that like you know again they design in such a way that uh, they're only going to build the farm if they can like you know throw away all the panels every 10 years or 15 years so they uh, their return on investment is fast otherwise they will not build it so they can afford to like you know keep swapping out panels but you can't uh, basically a normal uh, you know everyday joe cannot do that so in those sort of scenario having a panels that while uh, uh, 
expensive upfront but has much longer lifespan instead of let's say 20 year lifespan where you have to change them uh, to like you know 35 or even 40 years that's awesome and not to mention extra free heat so that's super awesome so that's the solution of it what about designing it uh, ironically this is one of those solution where people are like it's not whoa we build something new it's like huh what if we attach this to this that's it it's a synergy project so it's just normal photovoltaic panel meaning every company around the planet that can make solar panel can make this it, nothing has changed it's not like oh some specific type of solar cells that allows infrared to go through no nothing nothing fancy like that just normal basic as solar panels you do not have to think too much about it and you just put a heat exchanger below it and uh, heat exchanger this would be designed by you based on the, your working fluid requirement for example you many times people use air channel current or uh, some and you have to collect all of that into a central system generally air channel is used where you have a fear of freezing temperatures meaning if you are using water system and it does not have let's say a lot of anti-freezing to it you could run into a scenario where overnight your panels get uh, poof out of existence simply because again the water froze it became ice ice broke everything else panels went so in those sort of scenarios you have to be mindful of that what you use you use air or liquid so that's what you do you basically generally most of the time we use liquid and all the liquid is circulated collected into center place and then you use it for whatever you want to uh, do with it for example space heating now heating is one of those things that we indians are not that familiar with again for industrial process we understand for home use that heat is something that we have to pour gg amounts of our uh, energy bill into it that's not something you know common to india we are more familiar with cooling cost because our hot gets really freaking hot as in i'm not joking 51 degrees celsius air temperature temperature is achieved as in like past tense as in like during my school times it was like you know a uh, newspaper was like you know and again we had to shut down schools for two three days that kind of bonkers temperatures have been achieved so you get that point like we are more familiar with uh, cooling a place rather than heating a place but again heat is still something you require for many times of the uh, many places especially in northern latitudes and even in uh, basically india sort of scenario you have a scenario for example a building that has to you know for example hotel and that has to require uh, you know constantly wash insanely large amount of clothes bed sheets and those require hot water that hot water if you are uh, you know doing from solar awesome uh, if you directly try to do this electrically good luck your bank balance it will be ludicrously expensive shower you want hot water showers everywhere awesome again there are many use of hot water and not to mention even if you are getting hot water just as a side effect and you have nothing to do for it uh, even the fact that you are getting 10% more electricity per day that does add up making sure your panels last much longer that does add up so that's the design aspect of it so what are the challenges of deploying this well uh, whenever you are talking about adding something you are talking about adding bulk and weight so what does that mean that simply means whoever has to you know come to your place and like design the you know solar installation they have to figure out your roof structure far more efficiently meaning they can uh, again panels are very lightweight however if you are talking about like adding giant water bulkage behind it or like you know uh, multiple airflow channels insulators all that one of them will not be that big or that heavy but if you are talking about like you know kilowatts of panel then you are like yeah your weight has went significantly up so the weight calculation becomes a you know something that you have to take into serious consideration then also uh, creates another feedback chain effect of complex transportation and assembly uh, transportation directly means if you are tra transporting something heavy your diesel cost goes up that inherently means the product goes ex expensive and assembly also meaning uh, we are kind of familiar with a uh, solar uh, electrical assembly to a very uh, good degree meaning there are more than enough solar installer where they're like done we could go home but when you are talking about something uh, like you know do the electrical part and also make sure you do the water part properly in those sort of scenarios that uh, installation cost goes up so these two things are very significant challenge then uneven solar cell heat meaning uh, if you are talking about a solar panel nothing uh, no changes to it if you are let it around like you know throughout the sun time you will notice the temperature is going uniformly and the small block that you are seeing is the junction block at the bottom of it so panel heats up uniformly so every cell is aging exactly the same when you are talking about liquid cooling it so you will see uh, the first there is like a you know bit warm place bit warm place then you will notice your peak time the warm places are like concentrated in one place and here now what's happening here is basically water is entering here absorbing heat and going like 
zigzag zigzag and exiting but by the time it's exiting it has absorbed enough heat that its raw temperature is gone up so inlet temperature and outlet temperature is different consequence the panels cells would be in different temperature now is it better than having like this absolutely even this uneven heating is better than you know cooking the cells to like you know 50 degrees celsius or 100 degrees celsius that's far more desirable and far more better but again if you want to design it in a large scale and you want to get absolute performance you will never want to have this and that's why you cannot just uh, basically connect cell uh, basically panel to panel it has to be parallelly connected it cannot be serially connected otherwise the last other panels will like basically get cooked so that is one of those things that we have to be mindful for that that is one thing that has to be solved with better designs or just having high enough water flow rate that inlet and outlet temperature barely goes up cost cannot be too high because again solar while it is becoming cost effective it's not one of those things that every tom dick and harry is doing simply because it costs too much money and then you're gonna add uh, you know whole liquid cooling system to it uh, that will make it expensive it cannot be too expensive climate based design this is one thing that we have to understand because as an indian i'm thinking about oh we're just gonna have a water around that again if you are talking about like something uh, in australia you have to think about what happens say, during winter time if it snows you have to design it in such a way that can you manage it can you how much antifreeze you have to add like if you add antifreeze does it uh, affect its uh, you know thermal performance all those things become an issue so this is not one of those things where a company in china can mass produce panels that work for everywhere around the world that will not happen it is one of those things where it's like you know company in, uh, basically if every country will develop a uh, panel solution that works th uh, throughout their uh, latitude so basically indian company indian market they got it uh, company that are like you know working in usa they got it for us solution company working in canada they will got the canada solution so there is no one size fits all that will uh, limit down the how much mass production can be done. So there are some challenges. It's not just like control C, control V. It, there are some challenges that have to be solved. So what we can expect in the future? Right now, uh, European Union needs this dramatically and they need it now because again due to this you know war going on uh, the gas shortage is very serious and not to mention if domestic gas usage drops dramatically meaning all the residences as single home household uh, and all that jazz they start to go into solar thermal system not only it will reduce their electrical dependency if also reduce the gas uh, natural gas requirement in those sort of scenario that will help europe to go into you know completely in the renewable section while uh, you know uh, russia will also lose its asset where it's like you know i'm gonna shut down your gas valves they are like yeah good luck we are free already so it is right now like the optimum scenario where this sort of technology is getting insane amount of attention insane amount. like people went from uh, by 2018 one or two papers being published to like every tom dick and harry is publishing and every company is trying to get, sell products on it and there are many companies that have already made product available in the market so northern latitude needs that heat and if you are already putting solar farms simply because of electrical cost why not get the extra heat for free again it does add uh, you know uh, it does slow down your return on investment but if you're getting heat and you need the goddamn heat uh, that's a you know no but uh, you know, that's just shut up and take my money and solar will play a big role it's one of those things that we're gonna use it at this point in time solar has established itself as a proper renewable energy provider we have it we are using it and we're gonna keep using it simply because it's one of the cheapest out there basically it a bit slaps coal in terms of cost so that's why we use it and uh, the better we use it the less emission we're gonna have basically think of this way like why the heck you want to run a heat pump if you have free heat you don't that's the whole thing the better we become with this sort of situation the quicker we can go to renewable system so basically you want to make sure residential section drops their energy requirement dramatically almost 200 percent uh, commercial section drops their uh, energy requirement by 30 to 40 percent only industry should be in a position where they're like you know you cannot take care of it by uh, you basically you can still take care of it but you need a uh, giant uh, off uh, offshore wind farms giant uh, solar farms and then all these things combined then you can take care of everything else so future is very bright for this technology and current environment has like you know made sure this technology goes from like good to have to we need it now so this was my presentation on solar thermal photo uh, solar photovoltaic thermal systems hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching